Sorry. Welcome everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the August 5th regular meeting of the Harris County Board of Education. Um, it may look a little different up here tonight as our normal board chair is celebrating his 30th wedding anniversary with his lovely wife. So I will do my best as is per our policy as the vice chair to fill in in his big shoes. So bear with me if I have some technical difficulties tonight. Uh, first item up will be the uh, approval of the agenda. And I think Mr. Couch wants to address something there. Might be better to address it later before we get to the public participation. Okay, that, that would be fine. All right, so I need a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Goodno. I'm gonna make that change too. Oh, that is correct, my apologies. Um, we're gonna make a small agenda item change. Uh, the It will become a called board meeting to discuss and or approve personal and or safety protocols. So I need a new motion to just All right, Mr. Goodno and Dr. Sparks, second. All in favor? Any opposed? All right, thank you. All right, uh, next we'll move on to item C, uh, where we will review the uh, July 2021 meeting minutes. They should be in your packets. Um, I trust that you'll review those and uh, we will approve those at the next meeting. Uh, we'll then move to item D, which would be the public participation uh, part of our agenda. And now I'll we'll turn to Mr. Couch. We're gonna let uh, Mr. Kaminsky uh, make his presentation related to the Pickleball Association in just a second. But I do wanna explain something to the group that's here. Um, in talking with our lawyer, one of the things that, that seems best is if the during the committee meeting, because we have a committee board meeting and then we have a regular board meeting each month. Next week is the regular board meeting. Committee meetings, um, if we're going to take action like on personnel in order to hire people and that kind of thing, or to consider changes to the safety protocols, or to consider changes to how we go about considering changes to the uh, protocols, you need to have a call board meeting and put in uh, post what your intentions are, where the public will be aware. And if you'll see um, under, after we reconvene from executive session, the board will look at this particular item and this, this is for discussion and or approval. They don't necessarily have to do anything. But because of the increasing number of COVID cases in the community, it requires that the board continue to consider whether its plans to safely open schools remain appropriate under the circumstances. The board reserves the right to take action to adapt its safety protocols and plans to fit the changing conditions. Now I've had several people comment and, and you know, they feel like there's something sneaky going on and masks are gonna be mandated tonight and that kind of thing. And I, I want to tell you that that's not part of what's taking place. Um, I, I don't think the board's going to take any action on mandating masks tonight. And I, I would be surprised if they did. However, we are going to be looking at some things, including giving me as superintendent the authority to make changes based on their um, consensus opinion, rather than having to have a call board meeting. For example, if we had a if we had an outbreak at a school and it looked as though we probably need to close that school down, I would talk with them, they would agree to it, and we might do it overnight when we wouldn't be able to have an executive session. I'm sorry, this is not the point for discussion, but we can get to that later. So basically what they're gonna do is work on a system that makes us or gives us the ability to work quickly under circumstances that may deem that necessary. All right, with that being said, Mr. Kaminsky, would you like to address the group about pickleball? Thank you for the opportunity. My name is John Kaminsky. I'm a registered uh, professional engineer in the state of Georgia. I've, uh, own property here for 30, over 30 years. And I've played tennis probably since I was age 11. 
and I've enjoyed it. I had great competition. But three years ago, I picked up a pickleball paddle and found out one thing, it's fun. And that's the thing about pickleball versus any other sport. It is absolutely fun. <clears throat> I also, I was uh, involved with Fulton County for a number of years and developed a thoroughfare plan for a number of years. So I know what statistics means, what, what you should be looking at in the future. And this is what I think the board should be looking here in the future. Pickleball is the future. The purpose of my being here tonight, and I understand what you presented previously, what I've said. If the board is going after a bond money, the Pickle Board Club of Paris County would like to piggyback on that to build a quad, four courts of pickleball, at least. <clears throat> um, the pickleball quad would include the asphalt, finished services, lines, fencing, five foot fencing, benches and cover. No lights, and that does not include grading because I'm assuming, in my estimation, you know, that the grading would have to be done anyway for the six, six tennis courts that, that I understand that you propose. So with that, I'd like to give you I'll pass it out. Okay. I'd appreciate it. No problem. One is inside and one is outside. So I've given you the purpose, and now you have before you a sort of a fact sheet, which we're, you know, we're not gonna go through hardly any of it in detail with the limited time that I have. There's a great history of pickleball. It's played on a small court with a net. Um, it's inexpensive to play and everyone can play. places to play, there's over from 8,000 places to play in the United States right now. And the growth has increased some 25% from 1919 to 2019 to 2020. And I can see that exponentially growing here in the United States. As an example, <clears throat> Spalding County is presenting a Eastern tournament next month in which there will be $60,000 prize money for a pickleball tournament. It will also include uh, amateurs as well. There is a ambassador program uh, with the Pickleball Association in which participants can participate in a community grant program in which $250 is available for each member for the community. In addition, there's a high school grant program of $350 for each uh, member of the Pickleball Association. So there are some grant programs all, already available. I'm willing to tell you that the club will be willing to participate both financially and in technical uh, matters in the development of, of your program with tennis courts and with local pickleball courts. Jeff Reddick is a certified AIA uh, architect. He's nationally known. And when we get to the last page, that's his rendering of what a facility would look like. <clears throat> Opelika, which I've never played at, I was up there. Uh, if you look at that sheet there with the Auburn Opelika, it's an entirely enclosed facility uh, with 12 courts. They are building 16 other courts in the future. Spalding County, which I mentioned, is uh, sponsoring a national event next month, which I'm showing you there. 
which is, that's a picture of their picture uh, facility. And the last page is a rendering from a rendering which I got from, from the county. Uh, and we took that and then dropped it into, in, into, a, into a program showing two pods of pickleball courts and the six tennis courts on, on the Harris County Community Center property. I think that the board members should duly not only consider, but act in putting pickleball courts in our community. I would welcome any questions from the board. Mr. Kaminsky, what would be the cost of four courts? All right, my, uh, I do have an, I have a fairly good estimate for what I said for the no grading, no lights, and a five foot fence, the asphalt, the finish, uh, the lines, the benches, and the covering, $70,000. That's for all four. Four courts. That's four courts. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kaminsky. We appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, we don't give them? I need that tomorrow. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. We appreciate your presentation. All right, so we did have uh, three members of the community that signed up to speak. Um, Ms. Heather Hayek, hope I got that right, sorry. Uh, Brent, is it Wise? Okay. And Miss Valerie Longsword Sergeant. So if, if you wish to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. And Mr. Kevin Henderson, my apologies. What is your name, ma'am? Jamie King. Oh, uh, it may have gotten on that. That's okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Jake Hansford. Jake Hansford. Okay. All right, so just remind everyone, uh, you have five minutes. Um, the, the board will not ask you questions. Uh, you will speak. And then we will, of course, listen to what you have to say. And then uh, once the public uh, comments are completed, we will move on with the uh, agenda of the normal business. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, Ms. Ms. Hyatt, would you like to come up? Last week, so yes, I'll just dive right in. So I actually wanted to touch on the safety protocols if in quarantine. So what I have, and um, I'll be glad to share it with all of y'all, and I'm sure you may have already seen it, it's the Georgia Department of Health guidelines for quarantine procedures. And it doesn't seem to align with what Harris County has adopted. And I would love for us to consider it. So what it says is um, for um, the FCS will now allow all students regarded of vaccination status to continue reporting to school after direct contact if the individual one remains symptom free and two wears a mask while on school district property for 10 days after exposure. All students who report a pending test result may continue reporting to school if the individual remains symptom free, wears a mask while on school district property until the test results are received and reported. For me, the reason this is so important is my kids fell behind. They never had um, COVID last year. They had, my oldest was quarantined four times, missed lots of school, got behind, missed sporting events, some critical things that went on in life. Same thing for the younger one. And now they're both in, in, in high school and I just feel like it's real important for them to stay in class involved especially with the situation that we have here this is Fulton County is using this guideline I'll just tell you this um, but they have virtual school as far as if you go out of the classroom that teacher is always teaching in front of a camera at all times so those that are at home are seeing the same thing those students are seeing so if they go home for for quarantine, they can log on to their computer and still see the current class that their teacher's teaching. It doesn't seem like we have that functionality today, as far as I know, because my children didn't have that. So that's why I feel like we may need to adopt something a little different. And so that was what I wanted to bring. Um, I really appreciate uh, phase one to the athletic program at high school. I was so excited. My kids are excited. Uh, the players are excited. They're 
They're, they can't wait to say that's where I got to play and that's where I got to go to school. They're loving phase two. I know there may be opposition to that. I hope there's not because I have seen facilities around our area where they have invested in their programs a lot more than we have. And um, I know with Harris County, we don't have a lot of um, businesses to donate funds and things like that to the to other areas surrounding us. But I do think it's a need for us. And I think it's a big thing that the kids would certainly appreciate and welcome. And I appreciate y'all just considering it, but it, it looked awesome and I really appreciate it. Thank you. I did want to comment that's part of what we're working on as far as protocol is concerned. The, the first ones that you talked about in reducing the number of quarantines, that's part of the discussion tonight. Wonderful. I appreciate you bringing that forward. Thank you. Mr. Wise. Hey guys, I spoke to you guys last week. Um, just wanted to come back up because I heard all the rumors about the mask mandates. Um, and so I just want to come up and talk to you guys about it. Um, feel a lot like she does as far as quarantining. My child was quarantined a couple times last year, got behind. Um, definitely need to look into ways around that. I do like the idea that she had. I think that would be something to look into. Um, other concerns I have, um, I know that you and I had a personal conversation prior um, and between you and I, I really feel you lean the other way as far as the way I lean. I think you want to send this back to mask. Um, and I understand they're gonna give you the authority and that's coming, so it's coming. When we go back to mass, I understand, I'm not going to go into details, but I understand where you're coming from. It makes sense. If I was in your shoes, I mean, I understand. However, I, I just don't think it's fair for one personal opinion that has a, a bias, a reason, should impact the majority of the people that don't feel the same way. Um, there's Maybe there should be something, I don't know, a virtual to keep you away from people. I don't know. Um, I don't think it's fair to mask up the rest of the, of the kids due to fear. Uh, it's just a fact that the kids, they're good. We're going to, whether you put on mask or not, we're going to have outbreaks. This is coming. It happened last year. We wore masks all year long. Didn't seem to do anything. The vaccinations are here. A lot of the public's been vaccinated. Don't seem to be helping. They're, we're still getting spikes. Five years from now, we're going to be standing here and we're going to have the same conversations. It's not going away, guys. We, we got it. It's here to stay. And just like the flu. Flu's been here our whole life. This is too, unfortunately. I hate it. And it, I know it's scary, but we all have to figure out a way to live with it. And be a ma I don't want to be masked for the rest of my life. I don't want my kids to be masked. I got a five-year-old at home that doesn't know how to read. He needs to learn to read. This is important times in his development. And he's going to be looking at his teacher, and they're going to be masked up. I can't tell... What you're saying, if I'm a five-year-old trying to, I need to look at your lips when you're reading to me, when you're teaching me, I need to learn how to pronounce my words. And obviously I'm country. He don't need to learn from me. He needs to learn from these teachers, man. He's not going to be able to learn properly with the teachers masked up, with him masked up. I just think it's, it's not fair to these kids. It's just not. And the masks aren't going anywhere. If, we, if, if we're afraid today, we're going to be afraid tomorrow, and we're going to be afraid next year, and we're going to be afraid 10 years from now. It's not going away, unfortunately. So what do you do? I'm asking you, what, what is y'all's opinion? What do we do? Do we want to do this to our children? I don't want my kids to go through elementary school and their whole childhood masked up. It's, it's awful. And I understand where people come from. If they have personal loved ones, and it's scary. I have a father that's sick. It's scary, but I mean, yeah, you just can't live in fear. And I don't want my kids, I feel we're stealing from their childhood. So that's just where I, I want to make that known that I just think that it should not ever come down to one person's choice. We should vote on this. Understand that you feel you're doing the best, but it should be a collective vote. And that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wise. Ms. Valerie Longshore Sergeant.
Hey, y'all. Um, everybody knows me. I teach theater at the high school. Um, I am president, uh, president at most of the board meetings. Um, heard a lot of great opinions from the public. Um, what I didn't necessarily hear was opinions, maybe from a teacher's perspective. Um, and I hope that by standing up here, I'm not committing career suicide because you, you guys know that I love and adore you. Um, and I certainly do not get into politics whatsoever. Um, but if you can ask my parents, I've never been one to shy away from asking for a reconsideration. Um, what I do know most, if I don't know politics, what I do know most is people and um, just seeing the people that we work with on a daily basis. Um, there's some fear. There's some genuine fear. Um, we have a little bit of the perspective, um, maybe not so much from the students, certainly not taken away from the parents. We have gone through laws personally at the high school. We don't wanna do it again, especially if it's something that we can control. Um, people are scared to lose their jobs because they have to risk their health. Um, and we certainly understand that you guys took a, a great step last week, um, but no one has ever said that COVID stops at this age, that these kids can bring it into us too. Um, we certainly do not want any illness whatsoever, uh, but we certainly don't want death. Um, we know that this is a, uh, what we would hope to be a temporary discomfort. We did it all last year. Um, I would be the first to tell you, it's not fun. I'm a theater person. I wanna see the expressions. I wanna see your face. Um, but I wanna see your face the next day in my class. I wanna see your face next year in, my, in, in the school. Uh, I keep hearing this and um, I just thought that it rang true. I keep hearing people say that, you know, the, the death rate and things like that is such a low percentage. It's less than 1% or whatever it is. Um, again, I don't do politics. But that less than 1% is somebody's 100%. And we, are, we pride ourselves in Harris County on being a family. And I don't know that we should be risking members of our family. Um, temporary discomfort is better than some of us having a lifetime full of guilt that we didn't do it. Uh, last thing, Harris County has, been, has always been proactive in the decisions that we make. Uh, surrounding counties, look to us for the decisions that we make. So I just ask you to possibly reconsider and show that everyone around us, that we also are taking strides to look after the city. Thank you guys so much. Have a great evening. Thank you, Ms. Sergeant. Mr. Henderson. Good evening. Good evening. Um, really, this evening I came, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, making it make sense. You know, I have four daughters. Um, we were virtual all last year. I even had to um, brush my skills off and become a teacher as well. So believe me, it's rough doing the virtual piece. But, you know, honestly, with what's going on, making it make sense. And I mean, I got a daughter at Creekside, I got a daughter at Pine Ridge, and we did virtual sneaker peeks. So, okay, virtual sneaker peeks means that we don't want to risk something. Creekside, the same way. Creekside sent me a flyer to let me know we're doing virtual in person. So, when I go to the school, oh, it's virtual. So, something's going on here but we're still opening up Friday with no other options. Took away the virtual for only medical necessities. And I work for the Department of Behavioral Health and Development and Disability, so I'm well aware of the process. A licensed professional counselor. So I'm just wanted to make it make sense with taking away certain options, you know, mask or no mask. Okay, that's everybody's option, you know. But as I look at the board, we're all masked up. So, you know, I just, 
you know, again, my four daughters, if one should happen to get sick, I got a two and a four year old, you know? So I'm actually a parent that's trying to figure it out. You know, what do I do? Have to send them, don't have a virtual option. So I'm just here to try to, you know, get some type of understanding or, or you know, and I mean, honestly, on top of that, I mean, it was the increase in school taxes. So computers being issued, I don't think should be a problem. If virtual, you know, it was even put on the table. I just feel like risking one kid getting sick and being hospitalized is just not worth it. I mean, the wave going on now, all the surrounding schools that are elementary schools are running rampant with COVID, young individuals. I know this is what you all are seeing, but Harris County is still going forward. Harris County even came and said, all right, we'll do, I mean, I'm sorry, Muskogee County said at first, um, no um, mask. Then they came back and said, let's do the mask. Everybody's unsure but they just want to put the key at safety first. So that's what I'm just here to try to figure out, um, get some type of understanding. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Ms. King? I am Jamie King. I have three boys in the Harris County school system. Um, we recently just moved back from Florida, um, which we loved, but we wanted to be back home. Um, I was at the other meeting the other day and I did not speak and I wished I would have. So in case the mask mandate is overturned, I just wanted to give another perspective. Um, I also, I didn't teach in Harris County schools, but I subbed and I was a paraprofessional. Um, so I worked with the children every day, just like the other teacher here. Um, and there's another uh, thing that needs to be addressed other than the transmission rate itself. Um, mental health of the kids is a big issue right now. It's been an issue. Um, on the CDC's website, it said that 22 point, there was a 22.3% um, spike in ER trips for potential suicides by children age 17, um, 12 to 17 in summer of 2020 compared to 2019. Um, they can't prove that this is due to COVID, but they can't prove that it's not due to COVID. That's quite an increase um, in one summer. Um, the same way we see seasonal depression up north, we moved from here to Illinois and then to Florida because the seasonal depression was very real. Um, with seasonal depression, you take away the sun. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal. You take the sun away, people get depressed. Um, some of these kids in the schools, you take the smiling teacher's faces away. Um, it feels like isolation. It's, it you know, increases the depression. Um, these numbers are real. I'm not just saying this because I, you know, I worked there and I saw some children. Um, it's, it's very real. Um, so I feel like the masks, I know, I know it's not being overturned. I just want this perspective out there in case it does. Um, there are other things to look at other than just the transmission rate. Um, there, I worked with um, mostly resource kids um, and across the board, general ed and the special education, um, we have children who don't get the smiling faces at home. They don't get um, affirmations at home. They don't have loving interactions with family members at home. That comes from school. When you take um, a teacher and you mask them and you sort of isolate them from the student, that, that messes with their mental health. And their mental health is just as important as their physical health. Um, I understand that some um, parents are scared for the safety of their children's health. I also understand there are some parents who deal with other sides of that like their children's mental health. So um, the parents who are nervous about the mask wearing, their children are more than welcome to walk into school with three masks and a shield. They are protected. There's no way that's getting in through, you know, a mask and shield, whatever. They have options. Um, the parents who have 
kids on the other side with mental health problems. They don't get a choice. There's not that choice there. Um, I just, I think it's a very important thing. It's a very real thing. It needs to be looked at just as much as the transmission rate would need to. Um, I understand, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the other teacher's name, but I do understand her point saying that one child dying is, is or you know, the percentage and all that, it's someone else's 100%, I understand that. One child dying from COVID in our school system um, is devastating. However, one child dying from suicide because they're depressed, because they have no normalcy, that's a big deal too. So I do want that looked at. Um, I just want to advocate for those kids that I worked with that only get that at school. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. King. Mr. Hansford. Hello, uh, my name is Jake Hansford. I moved here in 2012. I retired from the Army, 20 years in the Army, and uh, stayed here in Harris County for uh, the same reason a lot of military uh, stays within this county because the people, uh, uh, the people that make this county. Uh, I've always been a big believer in uh, majority rules, and I, I think it's a vast majority of the parents in the county do not want masks. Uh, I think we all know that. Um, my, my daughter last year, you know, she'd have sores around her mouth from wearing her mask all the time. And I, I don't think we need to put kids through that again. Uh, other part is I heard Dr. Couch mention earlier that the board is going to give uh, the power for him to make decisions on COVID. So all the board members are uh, elected by the citizens of the county. And this is obviously the largest topic in the county when it comes to schools. I don't understand why one dis one person should make the decision that affects so many. I think it should be voted on. Uh, I understand decisions will have to be made at some point. You know, we're talking about an outbreak. We have to shut school down. Well, we didn't have to last year. Uh, and I think with vaccination, the numbers will be a lot lower this year. Um, Nobody liked last year, uh, but it will be better this year with all the vaccinations. And, and I don't understand why we can't try it maybe for the first quarter without masks. I think maybe relate numbers of uh, positive cases to last year and then go forward from there. That's my two cents. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna address that. Go ahead. I wanna be sure you don't misunderstand, Mr. Hans. What I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not saying the board's going to give me the authority to make a de sweeping decision by myself. What they're going to give me the authority to do is make changes based on them with a consensus opinion. In other words, I can call them, they can call each other and decide as a board what they want done and I can implement it without us having a call board meeting. Does that make sense? I'm not going to. You know, there's a saying: if you, if if you're leading everybody and you turn around and you're alone, you're just out for a walk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I I work for these people, and and they'll have they have input into those kinds of decisions that affect this community. They're the ones that are selected. I'm selected by them. I work for them. So did you want to speak, sir? Please come up. Your name, please, sir. Uh, Matthew Bathauer. Matthew Bathauer. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I was cooking dinner when I found out about this. Uh, I'm not a public speaker. I didn't even know what I was going to say, but um, everybody hates that guy that wants to piggyback off of mental health masks to uh, or for and against. Um, I mean, you want to talk about bacterial infections in the masks, 
these kids, a lot of them don't know, change your mask every day, wash your mask. You got E. coli, you got infections, you got respiratory illnesses that aren't COVID. We're all dealing with this a different way. What I can't deal with is having my son look at me like last year and tell me I hate school. Because my mother can pinpoint the day I hated school and I graduated high school in 2003. I was lucky enough to have a different path with the things that were going on in the world where I can make a successful life out of it. He might not have that option. The fear that people are dealing with there are steps to take to help you deal with that. You can get the shot, you can wear a mask, you can wear a visor, you can wear gloves. But if this microphone isn't sanitized after everybody speaks, what's the point? If we're not socially distanced with masks, what's the point? It's, we're ice skating uphill. And if you're gonna, hamstring our children over this, it's not gonna get any better. I, I can't have my son hate school because of this. Dividers, teachers can wear masks. If you want your kid to wear a mask, let them wear a mask. If they don't wanna, this is the first stance of individuality. Find out who you are and what you wanna do. but. This is, it's, it's killing our kids in more ways than just this virus. And I really hope that you take that into consideration when you think, do we need elementary school students to wear masks? Let's face it, kids are gross. They're gonna be gross. But if you don't let them dig in the dirt and pick their nose and eat it, <laughs> they're not gonna get any better. You're gonna end up with Pre-teens, teens, 16, 17, 20-year-olds, just sickly and awful. Like you kids play outside. Take the masks away. Keep them off. If you're an adult and you want to wear one, wear one. Don't do this to my kids. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I was also late on that chance. Your name, please? My name is Jason Worthington. Worthington? Worthington, yes. Thanks. It's been about 30 seconds to uh, explain my background. I promise you it's relevant. Uh, so I am a, uh, an Army veteran and former intelligence analyst. Uh, I deployed to Iraq in the mid-2000s. And then in 2008, I was stationed in South Korea, still as an intelligence analyst. Uh, so what I saw there is, uh, you remember in 2008, obviously the most important thing going on with our military was Iraq and Afghanistan. So people stationed in places like South Korea, uh, they did everything they could to make North Korea out to be this big, scary monster. They go and they report to the superiors. And I've seen, I, I saw that a lot over there where they would kind of inflate, num you know, fudge numbers and just kind of inflate the, the situation uh, because it made them seem important, like they were doing something as well. Okay, so now transition to what's been going on ever since COVID-19 has started. Uh, this just hasn't sounded right. Uh, I mean, doctor, the day that, let's pretend that hypothetically uh, COVID-19 went away overnight. Dr. Fauci is no longer a celebrity. Uh, the lady who did this, uh, who's in charge of the CDC, both of them have, uh, you know, thrown a baseball pitch at, you know, baseball games and stuff like that. Uh, and then even at the state and local level, I've seen local news where like, you know, we're bringing in Dr. So-and-so to get interviewed and talk about COVID. They've been given this position of prestige and this level of power that they've never ha had before. So is COVID ever going to go away? Well, as soon as things were going back to normal, we had the Delta variant. So are there going to be more variants? variants. Well, how many Greek letters are there in the alphabet? So yes, there, there are going to be more variants. As long as we continue to let this go and continue to get pushed around like this, this is, going, this is never going to end. We're always going to have to wear masks and everything. So I think that if teacher, you know, if children or teachers are scared of COVID, I think they should wear masks. They can wear visors, they can wear rubber gloves, whatever they need to do to make themselves feel safe. I think that's fine. But I do not want uh, any of my children uh, wearing masks. All right, thank you for giving me the chance to speak. Thank you, sir. All right, so at this time, 
Uh, having no one else that wants to speak, we're going to move on from the public participation portion of the meeting. You're welcome to stay if you want to stay. If you would like to be excused, please do so. All right, so at this time we'll move on to item E1, a curriculum update from Dr. Penny. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, mostly informational updates. If you take a look, starting out, reward school recognition for Park Elementary. So if you remember back in 1819, we had uh, a very high or higher CCRPI score compared to the year before. So that made us or put us on the reward school list. And because there was no testing in 1920, uh, they, in order to calculate that, they use the 1819 score. So essentially, we've received that oh, a reward two years in a row. Down underneath that, remember I told you when we were going over milestones, scores, that the information was embargoed. The state will be releasing the information publicly on August 16th. And then number three, accountability in 2022. So as you know, CCRPI is our big indicator of essentially how we're doing um, basically on state tests and how we're doing on attendance and how we're doing on behavior. So based on what they're saying is they don't anticipate a lot of our waivers being granted at the state level. You know, the state sending the waivers to the federal the education department. So a lot of the things that they were doing pre-COVID are coming back. So for example, you know, there is the expectation of the 95% participation rate in the Georgia milestones this school year. So if you know last year, they waived that participation rate. We were sitting anywhere from, I think it was 73% to 86% participation in our milestones. Uh, so while they will not produce a CCRPI score because they won't have all the data points to produce that score, they will be releasing the individual pieces. So for example, this year, or I should say for the end of last year, this year we'll get a graduation rate. We're not going to see the progress of the other, the, you know, the progress scores. We're not going to see some of the other calculations because they just don't have the data. So at the end of this school year, it'll be very similar where we're not going to get that one score for CCRPI. They're going to give us those individual categories that are available to be calculated for CCRPI. Number four, uh, just really an action item that's on the agenda is the approval of 20 day tutors. That's something we do every year so we can pay them with 20 day funds. Um, and again, you'll see that on the action item. And then the last item I have for you is a cohort withdrawal update. And this is our graduation rate update. Now, anything I say today is, you know, we're, we're still in the process of making our best guess. We have until August 26th when this portal closes. So we still have the opportunity for some students to graduate, which we do anticipate two more graduating. And then of course, collecting documentation. So what I did, if you remember last year, I sort of broke it down, color coded it and show you what each category was. So we're looking all the way to the right under 2021 and notice that we have 408 graduates. Also down at the bottom where it shows the grand total, we have a grand total of four, essentially 458 students that will say count for Harris County. They came through Harris County, may not have graduated, they may have transferred to another system, but these are the students that count for us. So if you look at the numbers under the 408, we have 14 active students at this point. So those are students that did not graduate still have the potential to graduate. That's where we think we're gonna get two more. Removed for lack of attendance, seven. So those are considered dropouts. Uh, didn't have any expelled. Other adult educations, and I know someone at the last time we talked about this, made a point about this. Other adult education, even though they're going to get their GED, does count as a dropout in this category for the state. For unknown, we have four. Notice the year before we had 22. So this time we have four unknowns. We know what their reason is and they're of those four, three of them are actually unknown. So, you know, it might be a group home we've called and they said they checked themselves out at 18 and we're not sure where they went. But that number is a lot lower than it was last year. 
uh, one incarcerated, and then we have that last column. This is the important one, homeschool and blank, we have 16. If we have the documentation, and I was trying to do this before the high school could get to it just to get, a, get an idea of where we're at. If we have documentation, which I know we will on multiple of those students, and we have two blanks, if we fill those blanks, if we have documentation, someone went to private school, those will actually change to the positive for us. They'll disappear and they'll take that 458 down to a lower number. So right now, and again, don't hold me to this because it's a big data file and we're, we're working with all the numbers. Right now, if you take the homeschool and blanks and count them against us, which won't happen, the lowest according to this is 90 or 89%. So the point, the reason I say that is, okay, you know, we've, we've looked at it, we've done a lot more work than we've done last year. And as it looks, as we start getting another graduate or two, as we start coding those homeschool and blanks and getting the documentation, that number should go up. And again, I, I'll try, I don't wanna give you a higher number. I wanna give you the base and, you know, almost worst case scenario. And that, that's what we're looking at. And that is all I have for you. Any questions? Dr. Denny. Yes. So on the ones that you said, I think you said we may possibly have two more graduates. Yes. You said that they have to be done by August the 26th. Is that correct? I believe it's it's either the 26th or 24th, but yes, late August is when they call it an application. That's when it closes and you can no longer make changes. So if they were to go after that date, would they then go into our 2022 number as graduates? they go into the five-year graduation cohort. So there's actually two numbers. Uh, I don't have the files to calculate the five-year, but notice on the, on the paper there, every year you get a four-year and a five-year. So that student now becomes part of the five-year cohort. Anyone else? Dr. Denny, I did have a question. Um, in the past, I know with my students, uh, as they were going through the school, we didn't have an opportunity to take the SAT or some of those tests here in Harris County. We always have to travel to another location. Is it possible for us to get a testing site at, at our high school? I don't know the answer to that, but I'll certainly check into that. I think that might increase our numbers of, of students that, you know, have an option to take it if, you know, if it's at all, one of our facilities here in the county. I know the PSAT we do here, and there's certain guidelines you have to follow. I've no, just never had anyone ask that question, but we can definitely. SAT or ACT. Dr. Sparks. So what? Like they're currently active, so they're enrolled. They're showing up tomorrow at Harris County High School. Yes, yes, yes. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Dr. Denny. All right, thank you. At this time, we'll move on to item E2, a human resources update from Ms. Carl. Good evening. Hello. I'm just sharing with you the usual that I share with you every month. If you take a look at your handout for employment opportunities, that says of August 2, the day we turn that in. Just wanted you to see, as I always tell you, do not be afraid. Um, you see 18 there. However, um, six of these positions are the ones we leave open because we're constantly recruiting for bus drivers and substitutes and positions of the like. 12 of these are, you know, actual um, that we're looking for specific um, seven of the 12 are pending. So we are, um, even though you see 18 there, it's very, we're very close and just really excited. I know you got to, some of you got to meet our new recruits for our new teachers last week through orientation. Tomorrow's the first day of school. They're very excited at their um, homeschool sites and we're just looking forward and, and want to wish all of our teachers a great school year. Um, down there at the bottom, just a couple little updates. Um, our daily health assurances, those were sent out on, as an online option. The daily health assurances are just, the, it's the same thing we did last year um, with just making sure our employees understand COVID-19, how it can be transmitted from person to person, sharing um, safety and 
health precautions and our expectations for our faculty and staff to keep themselves safe and to keep our students safe as well. Um, there were just a couple of modifications this year. We were addressing um, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated. There's some little few differences as quarantines were mentioned earlier. So those are some things there. And if you have had a positive COVID diagnosis in the, in the last 90 days or so. So there are a couple of those provisions that are current with what we see happening right now were added. Um, as of today, I think we're right at 99% completion rate on, on all of those, and that's very good. And then um, August 5, we uh, just had our school-based health team training um, in coordination with support services to include some of our medical representatives and our district personnel to help track and trace COVID. So that was, um, that team met, I think, yesterday, and then our school-based health teams, I'm sorry, they met today, we're meeting a lot, um, to make sure our schools understand how to contact Trace. So that's a coordination between human resources and support services. And we just have upcoming training. Our school uh, media specialists are going through a new, they're on a new evaluation instrument this year, just as our counselors and a lot of our other. So we had a really great trainer come treat, train our administrators, Dr. Robin Smith, she will be returning September 1 to do certified training for our media specialists. And that's all I have for you. Anyone have any questions? All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Carlisle. All right, thank you. <clears throat> this time we'll move on to item E1 and hear a support services update from Ms. Baker. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm going to start my presentation to you with some good news. Um, Mr. Phillips at the high school, who is, of course, our high school um, guidance director, he's the head counselor there, received the Gold Impact Award from SEFCA. And SEFCA is the Construction Education Foundation of Georgia Association. And he received this award as being a school counselor who is leading the front line when it comes to career readiness and workforce development. But Mr. Phillips wanted me to make sure I told you that it was not just him alone, that he had this ability to do this because of his coordination with Mr. Steele and his construction program and Mr. Gary Johannes with his work-based learning students. So all of that together is what gave us the ability to now tell you that Mr. Phillips has gotten this award. So I want to tell you in the midst of all the other stuff, there's still some good stuff going on. So. I want to start with that. Um, my next topic is I just want to give you an update on the number of students that we have that have been approved for the virtual program. So far, we have five students who are approved with medically fragile excuses from a licensed medical doctor. And I've given you the numbers here of those students in the grade levels and the schools in which they are attending. Now, the support services team is handling the application process to make sure that they have everything in place to support. And curriculum is handling, of course, the instruction part of it to assign teachers and all of that. So I will update you on numbers. Um, we did have a date of July 15th as a cutoff date because obviously we needed to know which teachers we needed to pull if that were necessary. So as of today, we probably have one or two people that, for lack of better words, are not too happy with our decision because they didn't really meet the criteria, but that may change. If that changes, then of course I'll update you. And obviously if a student has a need and we know the student has a need, it was not, not be a carte blanche, no, they cannot be in the program. So we'll assess that as we get those applications. Yes, sir. How do you do with teachers? Is it one teacher for all the elementary students, one for the high school students? How, did, how many teachers does that tie up to her? That's, Dr. Danny's going to be handling that, so I'm not sure how they're going to pull the teachers, but I think that with that, I know high school, we have one teacher. The others, they're going to be determined. Yes, Mr. Couch. That's a complicated issue. Um, we're not going to tie up one teacher, but we may bring in a 49% person to work with all of them. Um, there, there is some CARES money available, which will help fund it, so it's outside of the budget. We are kind of in some development now. We've had some ideas of things that we wanted to do, but I'm not sure that that's going to work. Um, we're not sure we're providing enough instruction for the students. 
So we are looking at, at increasing that through a 49% person. And we'll just have to see, it's really kind of underdeveloped. Well, I just thought that'd be a shame to have a bunch of people one teacher. We can't afford to do that. Yeah. That, that, was, that was the reason for my question. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that model, but we're going to try to be as efficient as we can to make sure the students get the best instruction. The one thing that I do know, and I don't want to speak for Dr. Denny, but we've talked, is that we don't want to have a teacher to be teaching in the classroom all day and then simultaneously teaching a student. So we're trying to work that out. Yes. Inspector, so in the, uh, what is the process for a I guess an application for someone who has like either a medically fragile parent or guardian that may not put their child in school. Well, the way our outlines were written, they were written for medically fragile students. However, if we have a situation that we know the, the family is at risk as such, then we have reviewed a case by case basis. There, there are a couple of those under appeal right now. And, and I know looking at the situation, they're going to receive services because their parents medical fragile, very medical fragile. Any other questions? Okay, and so the last thing I'm going to end with is to let you know that we did host um, another vaccine clinic with DPH on Tuesday at the high school. And we had 80 people that were vaccinated at that time. And again, that was a first dose of Pfizer. So we'll follow that up in 21 days on August 24th with the second dose. And that's going to be um, from 3.30 to 5.30 at the PLC's cafeteria. And to date, I know you're probably gonna ask me because you've asked me before, we have in our own hostings of vaccine clinics, we've hosted it for 300 people from March up until August 3rd that we in Harris County School District have allowed people to get vaccines for. Ms. Price, do we know how many students that we did vaccinate? I do not. When they come in, they come in with their families, but we don't have that number. They just give us a blanket number. Well, Ms. Baker, I would just like to say on a personal note, thank you for, for putting together all of these clinics and all of the efforts to, to assist the community in getting vaccinated. Uh, we appreciate our partnership with the Department of Health here locally that that uh, helps support that as well. So thank you for all those efforts. You're welcome. And the Department of Health did tell me today we hosted a luncheon for the Department of Health with our school nurses, and they were very appreciative. And they said their car is on automatic drive coming to Harris County whenever we need them. Thank you. So thank you. This time we'll move on to item E1, Harris County Board of Education, listen to a facilities and technology department update from Dr. Finney. Good evening. Good evening. What you have there, um, the one item that I have some printed material on, I've got more than one, of course, um, is the phase one athletic update schedule from um, Steve McCune. Let me see if I can get there. It's an email that he sent me. So down there at the bottom there, you have the uh, preliminary schedule, which um, we're considering our June 23rd meeting as our preliminary meeting. The check sets for the drawings, which is 90% of the uh, approved drawings would be September 15th. The final drawings would be complete on um, November 13th. We would put it out for bid then. Um, we would take the bid on November 16th, board approval hopefully around the 18th. And then we could possibly begin construction on the 29th of November with a target um, completion date of the 29th of July. Um, there's going to be a lot of have to be a lot of discussion on that. Um, and the main thing for soccer would be the lighting. So one thing we're going to have to overcome is um, the actual construction site will not prevent us from using the track or the or the field. Um, but the big question is going to be lighting and, and getting a schedule um, for the lighting, um, either bringing in some temporary lights or scheduling it where it's going, not going to impact it. But the priority is to still be able to use the field in the stadium. Yes, sir. 
Have you had anybody express interest in wanting to do it, or is it a lot of interest there? Or not a lot There's interest? going to be a lot of interest in there. Um, since we have uh, publicized this, I've had a couple of, uh, actually three contractors contact me and um, I'd let them know that the schedule is to be determined and uh, soon soon published, so. Dr. Benny, I, I did have a question. Um, I know we have a rendering of one that uh, Southern A&E is doing in a neighboring county, yep. well, Northern County, I should say. Um, will the board and any interested parties have an opportunity to go and view this stadium sure, to I see will, what it looks like. Sure, I will contact Steve McCune if that's if that's what you want to do, and we can set one up like when we went to Redbud. Uh, additionally, those renderings that he has are the ones for um, Villa Rica High School, which is in con under construction right now. They're also going to create some of those renderings for us, um, and also a nice little video um, with Harris County on there instead of um, Villa Rica. So well, I will I will get with Steve and see if we can set that up. I would like to see us uh, do something similar that we did with the middle school uh, project when Ms. Hayes and her uh, group were also invited to go. So I would think we would maybe include our our football, uh, so, uh, soccer, track coaches to see if there's something in the stadium that they would like, or they would, they have seen, or okay. of course they've, they've been a lot more places than, than a lot of us have. So their input would be valuable as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. So did I just hear you say, I mean, I know we would like to do a tour, but you say that Villa Rick is still under construction as well? Villa Rick is still under construction. Which is what we're kind of doing the rendering of, correct? Yes. <laughs> That'd be kind of hard to view, wouldn't it? Well, you, you uh, I don't know to what state it's still under construction. Um, Let's check and see if Steve does. I'll see what Steve says. And if we can set it up, we will. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next thing is, is I've been approached um, by Randy Dowling from the Harris County Board of Commissioners. They've got a problem with their diesel fuel tank that's underground. Um, and they've got about 90 days to make a decision. Um, not make a decision. They've got about 90 days to undertake a renovation of their diesel tank. It's out of compliance. Um, so the EPA has told them they have to replace it. Um, so that would uh, have to begin in about 90 days for them to replace that tank and it would take about six months. Um, he has asked me to bring to the board for consideration and um, if they could fuel their diesel fleet um, with our fuel point here at the bus shop, which would consist of some trash trucks and the trash trucks and things like that. Um, logistically, um, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm not making a recommendation here, but logistically, um, we could um, facilitate that by giving them their own um, login number. And um, then we would bill them for the reimbursement of the diesel fuel. The things to consider, however, are what if there was an interruption due to a storm, due to an unforeseen event um, and things like that? Um, we would need that diesel fuel obviously for our buses. So I've simply told uh, Mr. Dowling that I would bring it to the board for consideration. Um, and like I said, their timeline is in about 90 days. They have to start digging up that tank and replacing it. Okay. Yes, sir. What's the timeline on getting, getting it fixed? Okay, getting it fixed is after they start in about 90 days, their estimate is they would be um, on, if we agreed to this, they'd be on our diesel for about six months. Um, their other option is to buy it retail. Um, don't know how, don't know how easy it is to uh, fuel a garbage truck at the Circle K. Um, don't know a Circle K, I don't know what the size of Circle K's diesel tank is. Either, so. I, would, I would imagine not very easy. Right. Right, and, and you all know how those construction projects are, their estimates. And when you're dealing with the EPD, when you're dealing with the Environmental Protection Agency, it is um, meticulous. Um, we went through this, we almost went through this a couple years ago, um, but luckily we were in compliance and 
the board and the fleet had had the foresight to go ahead and replace it so that we didn't have to get in this situation. Yes, sir. I know that some of their vehicles are used for transporting prisoners. Right. All that would have to be, all that would have to be determined in a memorandum of understanding. Dr. Penny, uh, I did have a question. Do we still have the fueling station behind uh, Creekside? Yes, sir, we do. And then we, we used to have one at New Mountain Hill. Is that one still there? No, so the only two we have is Creekside and, and here at the... Okay, is the at tank the, at Creekside diesel? It is only diesel. If you remember, we had to get the um, waiver um, to construct the addition at Creekside. Right. And that was approved because that's only diesel. Okay. So I guess we could uh, just tell the county that we'll take that under consideration. Yes, sir, I will. Um, update on the Harris County High School HVAC system. Um, it's substantially complete, which means they've essentially completed the project except for the items on the punch list and they finished on Monday evening. <laughs> so we came in right under the wire. Um, so they do have some things to come back and fix and correct, but right now we are adequately cooled um, with our new system at the high school. Um, so they've still got a program and upload the controls to the centralized system, but right now we can control them in the classroom. So that thing is almost complete. I appreciate uh, Mr. Dunn and his staff for the patients. Um, some of the summer staff was a little warm this uh, summer, uh, but they, they took it like a trooper and everything came together just in time. I so, did notice they're all wearing sweaters. And they're all wearing sweaters now because those new air conditioners are so cold. <laughs> so, yeah, so appreciate that, Mr. Dunn. Um, any questions on that? Yes, sir. I, uh, yeah. At this time, okay, every class, I, I, got the, I got the status from Tim at about four o'clock. Right now, every classroom is air conditioned with the exception of one that we had a compressor go out at the middle school and we will have a, um, we will have a, it went out at four o'clock this afternoon we will have a uh, portable air conditioner set up in there first thing in the morning, and we will have the compressor on site tomorrow morning so that they can replace it. Room 503 at the, at the middle school. Okay, I'm getting to that too, but um, I, I can say with confidence that in the morning when we start our routes, every bus will have an air conditioner on it. I can say we'll start with one, um, out of 110 buses, um, you know, something mechanically uh, can happen, but we're going to start uh, with, with all the air conditioners. <clears throat> and so I'll just kind of give you a summary of what we're, uh, what we're looking at and how we're ready to go tomorrow. Uh, as far as technology, we've moved all the Chromebooks up from the, from the schools to the next school for those um, kids changing schools. That went very smooth. These principals and their staff did a tremendous job um, getting those ready to go. Um, the Chromebook handbook and sign off sheet went out in a messenger for that link. So we're getting parents to sign off on the handbook um, and all the, all the administrators and media specialists have access to that. The network's been tested and diagnost uh, diagnostics were on. So, so far we've not had any issues with the network. Um, the technology stuff that we're ordering, that we ordered, it's, it's arriving. There are some supply chain issues, but we've got everything we need to, to start school. Um, Chromebooks, um, right now we have an enrollment of 5,618 students. Um, total in stock Chromebooks that we have right now are 6,080. Um, we have received at Creekside, the middle school and the high school, the new Chromebooks that we ordered. Um, we've uh, received some at Park, but we're still waiting on Chromebooks at uh, Mulberry Creek, New Mountain Hill, and Pine Ridge, the new ones that we ordered. Um, but we have enough that if we have to, we can shift around to make sure that we're um, getting started off 
um, with school. We only had 42 that went out of service this year, which is um, really good. The big years next year. Um, I'll have to get that number, but it's much bigger than that, the ones that are going to go out of service. Um, we've, we've got already ordered for the new middle school all of the switches, wireless access points, computers, LED boards, and that technology. Um, and we're confident that that's going to be here for the startup of um, the new middle school. For transportation, um, all the bus drivers have had their safety meetings. The parent message has gone out about the first day. Um, what to look for on the first day of school, uh, that safety message. All the buses have been washed, serviced, inspected, and the HVAC have all been serviced on all the buses. Um, routes been as assigned and routing is continuing as requests come in. Um, final radio checks have been done on the buses with all of the schools, so we're, we've got good, good communications. As far as maintenance, our five maintenance techniques have worked hard this summer. Um, primary, uh, Preventive checks and maintenance on the air conditioner. So I've given you that status. Um, custodians have worked hard too. All the summer complete, uh, cleaning is complete. They're back on their regular day and night shifts. Um, the new manager's doing a really good job in, um, in helping change culture and morale and, and get some things. COVID is still hurting us. What we've seen with this rise of COVID is we've seen um, a couple custodians that have been reluctant to return due to that due to that and a couple that have, um, are still out because of it. Um, we do have six new candidates in the process coming in there. And then finally, for the safety uh, aspect of it, all the cameras have been checked out, um, confirmed with EMS today that that system is working over there. They can see all the schools. Um, we um, have initiated radio checks internally at all the schools, the 911 radios and the bus radios. Um, safety plans for the schools are, are being updated and submitted. I'm also attending the safety, uh, the tabletop drills at each one of the schools. Um, the sheriff's department will be on site at each school tomorrow um, for traffic and just you know, general welfare. Um, SROs have all been contacted. They're ready to go and they're excited to get back to school. So that's all I have. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. How long did it take us to get all the phone books issued back out to students? Um, right now, um, it's. I, I can't tell you exactly how long it's going to be, but we're going to do that next week, hopefully. Yeah. Is that a quick process or a lengthy process? Well, I, uh, it's going to be a detailed process and it's going to be a very deliberate process to make sure that we get the right Chromebook back to the right child and to make sure that they're all accounted for and to make sure we've got our processes in place so that when we do get them out, um, it's, going to, it's going to function correctly and that we can account for those within our repair system and, and all of that. So there's a lot of logistics that goes in, into that. Um, if there was for some reason that we um, came up against a problem where we didn't get them issued out. Um, we've still got them at the schools um, so that they're going to be able to use them every day. But we want to make sure we do it right, just like they did when we took them up, um, because this is a very valuable resource and it takes a lot of logistics and a lot of accounting to, to keep well, track that, of them. That was the purpose of my question, because I know some teachers really like to use those, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Dr. Clark, I believe you had a question. Okay, we're not purchasing insurance this year. Um, that's, that's one of the good news. And I put that message out last week via um, Messenger. Um, CARES Act money covered the insurance. You know, we pay for that protection every year that theft, loss, and damage, um, uh, it's going to re be replaced. And so CARES Act money paid for that this year. So that's going to relieve that, relieve that burden on the parents. Now, we did leave in the handbook that if we find out it's intentionally damaged or intentionally destroyed, we're gonna ask the parent to, to uh, provide reimbursement for that device. Yes, ma'am. But parents still have to fill out the thing online. The, yes, the Google yes, and the message that went out. No money, but they still have yes, and that's all in the handbook. Um, that's all in the handbook. And um, so I sent the link this week to the handbook so they can read the handbook 
And then there's a link to the form and we've already had over 2000 parents sign that thing. Yeah. So before a child will be uh, issued their Chromebook, the school can go into that website, sort out all of that and verify that the parent has signed the Chromebook agreement before they're issued a Chromebook. Dr. Finney, I did have a question um, as it pertains to the masks, which are, as we know, federally mandated on any public transportation. We do have extra masks on each of our buses, correct? Yes, sir. I've got an abundance of youth masks. Um, and so we're going to have masks available on the buses and um, at least initially. And um, the last thing we want to do, and we, which, we can't, which we can't do, we cannot, if we pull up to a bus stop and there's a young man trying to, or a person trying to get on the bus without a mask, we can't just leave them standing on the side of the road. So we're going to give them a mask. Um, after a couple of times, if it starts becoming deliberate, then we're going to have to contact parents, uh, maybe make some referrals and help them understand that masks are mandated on the bus. But understanding that as we initially start, certainly people are going to have to get back in the habit of wearing those masks. Well, and we will I, have them available. I, as a parent, I know the first day of school can be hectic sometimes trying to get pictures and all the things that have to be done. Um, so I'm quite sure that they may have some little ones run out of the house without grabbing. So right. I'm glad to hear that we will and, have that. And the bus drivers know without, uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt, masks are mandated on the buses. And one last thing, what are we allowing or prepping for tomorrow for parents walking their children into class? Are we allowing that? Um, what is what are we doing there? That is really not exactly. We're right. letting the pre-K parents do it. I know that the uh, elementary principals, especially, have done a really good job with those that were concerned with new students or those that are apprehensive. They've been having guided tours all week, so we're looking at doing that kind of thing. We're we're not going to have wholesale stuff, but if you have parents who would feel more comfortable doing it later after hours, I'm sure our principal would be happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that will take us to item F1, the tabled proposed board policy G A R H B, uh, paid parental leave, parental leave. Um, as we know, we've, we've uh, tabled this and we will take action on this uh, next week. Did anyone have any questions or any discussion about that item? Okay. Well, that will take us to item F2, uh, the chemical bid that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval, the attached proposed chemical bid for the 21-22 school year. Did anyone have any questions about that? I'm sorry, repeat that question, please. What does Mr. Rozier do with those chemicals? <laughs> I'm thinking it's cleaning supplies, but we're going to check on it. I was going to make sure we're not running an experiment somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that will take us to item F3, um, Georgia Department of Education capital outlay project contract uh, that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval that attached contract uh, with capital quality project contract as proposed. Anyone have any discussion or any questions about that? All right, that'll move us to item F4, the Harris County Board of Education review for approval, the attached proposed FY22 RESA membership contract. That's about standard. It's gone up just a little bit, not much. I think it's up about $70. Yeah, great. And this contract is 
with the, for the services that they provide to us, correct? Yes. Okay. Anyone have any questions or discussion about that item? All right, that will take us to item F6. That the Harris County Board of Education review for approval the attached proposed resolution for the completion of the Creekside School Edition. Or did I miss one? Oh, my apologies. F5, that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval the attached security resource officer contract from the Harris County Sheriff's Department for the 21-22 school year. So we have all of our SROs ready to go, okay? Yes, and they all are familiar with their schools? Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone have any comments? All right. And that will take us to item F6. That the Harris County Board of Education review for approval the attached proposed resolution for the completion of the Creekside School Edition. Mr. Couch, can you speak on that? Creekside School Edition completion? Yeah. I'll, I'll defer to Dr. Finney. He's about to get up. All right. That's the, that's the final piece of documentation we have to submit to the Department of Education uh, for um, our complete reimbursement. There's an additional about $200,000 outstanding in our um, reimbursement for our capital outlay money. And this just says that the project has been complete. We've paid everybody and there are no liens against the building. Dr. Finney, while you're there, I did have a question pertaining to the SROs that, that just came to mind. If our SRO at a certain school is unable to perform his or her duties in a day, they get sick, they, you know, family illness or whatever, what is the policy? Does the sheriff put a, a road deputy in there for the day? Or how we, does have, that we have an alternate. We okay. would have an alternate, yes. And, and as you remember, the SRO at the high school is a rotating deputy every day. So I've already confirmed the name of the person that'll be there tomorrow. Okay. I'm not gonna say there might be questions about surplus vehicles. <laughs> so that will move us to item F7, that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval of the attached list of vehicles to be designated as surplus. Dr. Finney. Most of those are the white fleet cars and some of the trucks that we've had for years. Um, and as the as we were graciously granted from the Board of Commissioners some additional vehicles, then that pushes those older vehicles out. And one of them that's on there is Mater. Yeah, Mater, that's breaking our heart that Mater is going to be surplused and hopefully he'll find a good home. And there you are. No, not my yard, no, sir. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Anybody? All right. Thank you, Dr. Feeney. That will take us to item F8, that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval of the attached proposed memorandum of agreement between the county and the Board of Education. So you, you're familiar with the fact that this intergovernmental property use agreement was this board's impact on the county to give them storage the four classrooms the offices in the area of the plc we no longer use in order for them to work toward the mercer med facility because they they plan to use that for storage but they changed that plan when we offered them this and those of you that have an opportunity to see that med center if you want to go down there sometime i'll be glad to set it up it's going to be unbelievable and, and I really appreciate y'all working with them to do this agreement to make that come about. So, uh, Mr. Couch, are they going to use that for just storage or are they going to have personnel in there as well? I think it's going to be mounted storage, isn't that correct, Dr. Finney? They're going to use the four classrooms for storage. What about the offices? So, they're not, um, they won't use the offices that are in that section. And they're going to vote to permanently right? stationed, and then they, they want to use the cafeteria too for voting early voting or regular voting. I think early and regular voting. Okay, yeah. instead of going to that little bitty end, but I've emphasized, I've emphasized to them that we still control that part of it. 
um, but they wanted to put that in the agreement that they could use it during that period of time for voting and that the character and the historical significance of that cafeteria has to remain as it is. Thanks, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions? All right, so that will take us to item F9 that the Harris County Board of Education reviewed for approval the attached list of 20 day additional tutors. Mr. Couch. Uh, this is something we, we do every time, and these people have been incredibly important in coming in and working with students that are off grade level or need additional support in small groups, that kind of thing. Uh, that money comes down through the state and, and it comes in through the curriculum office, and they work on that. So it's called 20 day money because I don't know, I guess because we had 190 days, and then 20 days outside of the regular 190 is what the fund is for. But it can be done during the year if it's not an employee. Okay. No, it can be done during school if it's a 49% person, somebody who's not on regular. And some of that would be after school, yes. They can't do them both, but that would be double dipping. Does anyone have any questions about that? All right. That will take us to item F10. That the Harris County Board of Education review and approve the attached list of FY22 Title I extended day tutors. Again, this federal money comes down through TAG, and it's something we do every year. And instead of approving them all individually, we just do them on mass. And there are people that work with us and people that got worried. So, in most cases. Okay. Anyone have any questions about that? All right. That will take us to item G1, that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached major purchases report for the month of 2021, or July 2021, excuse me. I would like to address that. Um, you see the, there's a large expenditure on the million dollars and that's the bus fund. Remember we determined we were gonna buy buses. And that's that expenditure. Um, I can't remember how many did we buy. Ten. Gus. Eight. 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 And then you have the computer tech, computer technology, and then also um, this is an accounting kind of procedure. You have two million outstanding open purchase orders, which is all part of the process of leading towards our fund equity. That, that's just we wanted you to know that that was out there. And, and I mean, it's all approved and being spent, but it's just a matter of them sending it in, us reimbursing just the end of the, the fiscal 21. You're going to have to help me figure out what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Well, this here. From a dot to saw. No, those were, those were um, old analog cameras that went out of service and no longer would function. And we had to replace it with the future. All right. Any more questions? All right. So that will take us to item G2. The Harris County Board of Education review the attached financial report from July 2021. That's Do you have any questions? Some of this is still in flux because we have uh, grant monies out there that haven't been accounted for and transferred in. And there's just a lot of different things going. We, we should see our fund equity go up considerably. And again, Ms. Ms. Chandler and Ms. Seha, thank you so much for getting this report generated as quickly as you do. It, it, it is greatly appreciated that we can see this and see these numbers um, so close to the end of the month. So thank you for that. And thank your team for all their hard work and putting it together. So that will take us to item G3, the Harris County Board of Education review the attached school nutrition program financial report as of July 31, 2021. I don't really have any comments unless you have any questions and I'll be more than happy to have uh, Ms. Baker answer. 
We're just getting started with that. Bill sales, do we have it live? What bill sales do we have it live? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there sales for some of the things? No, not sales. No, but we are Anyone else? Some of those could have been charged some of the staff meals we've been paying for too. All right. So that will take us to item H that the Harris County Board of Education share comments, news and information they might have with the public and other members of the board. And this evening I will start with the ladies, Ms. Oliver. I uh, just wanted to say it's so good to see the principal here. You guys are what you're doing, how you're encouraging the crew and the teams. Mars Big Day! I know you're excited. You see it. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just want to say, too, I'm, I'm really excited. But I, um, for those of you who are watching, I know we've had a lot of parents and community members and business owners and um, teachers and, and students have, um, over the past 30 days, I've documented personally what I've received in emails and um, text messages and phone calls and 360 contacts just to me in 30 days um, has been wonderful. It's so good to hear from all of you. I'm still trying to reply to everyone. I will get to each of you. So thank you for um, for uh, letting me hear your heart. It's so good to hear from parents and, and faculty and, and from people all over across the county and from other counties. Um, so thank you for reaching out to me. I will get to you, but um, thank you for sharing your heart with me. And uh, it's gonna be a great year. And uh, looking forward to uh, joining you with you. So thank you. Dr. Sparks. Thank you. Echoing from what Ms. Oliver said, I did not count the um, number of contacts I had, but I do appreciate um, you contacting me. I appreciate being, um, being active in our community and we want to see what's best for our kids. Um, I also want to welcome everyone back and thank all of the staff for the great job we're going to be educating our kids. Way to go. Have a great year. And then I'd like to thank Mr. Jordan Phillips, the treasurer for FFA, for his personal handwritten note and sending me a copy of the FFA. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. Park. Mr. Goodnote. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to take a moment to thank this board and to all the staff at Park Elementary for the prayers, the donations to the altar, and the board. Huh? It's truly appreciated. And good job. Um, I'd like to thank Park, uh, kind of the board, they had it for yesterday. I know she really appreciates that. Thank you staff, keep them gracious with that. I appreciate the support and the great appreciation. I know there's a lot of kids there so far. 
turn off. I'll show you stuff here. Perfectly thank him for deciding to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goodness. Mr. Green. I will say welcome back. It's been a long time since I've seen your shining faces in person. Um, I was telling Mr. Cowboy, I was like, when's the last time we saw the front? He said, well, they're on the computer all last year. I was like, I meant in person. <laughs> so I just want to tell each one of you, um, I hope you had a great summer. I hope you enjoyed your time off. I know as we get down to business tomorrow, I wish you could each of you the best year that you'll ever have. Um, I appreciate everything you do for these kids of this county. Thank you so much. Mr. Crocker. Mr. Echo, Mr. Green, uh, I, I've never seen all the pictures here since I'm the new guy. I would say, are we ready? All right. Mr. Grant. I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I got some new information from uh, DPH. I know y'all are glad to hear that. But uh, I, I, I know that your staff's gonna be mandated to wear a mask and, and something I wanted to share with them and I wanna share with you. I'm gonna send out an email tomorrow. And um, one of the things I want our students to be aware of and you can help encourage this. Okay, the close contact definition excludes students who are within three to six feet of an infected student where both students were engaged in consistent and correct use of well-fitting face mask and other K-12 school prevention strategies. You know what that means? That means if they both got on masks, they don't get quarantined. So think about that one. I'll get you a copy of it. That's going to make a huge difference, especially with our staff. If they're wearing their mask and a kid has is positive with COVID-19, if they've stayed six feet away and they've had their mask on, they won't be quarantined, okay? Whether they're vaccinated or not, vaccinated or not. We'll be talking more about it, but that's really, really good news. That's a game changer for some of us. Um, I would just like to echo uh, what everyone else has said. I know that was is what Mr. Shane says every every night as well. But um, lots of great points given. Um, very excited about school starting tomorrow. Um, I know this team has in, that's in this room has put in tremendous work preparing for this school year, and I, I know for a fact you will do great things and. Just want you to know you always have the support of this body in everything that you do. Um, welcome back to our students. Welcome back to all of our staff. Sorry that we couldn't do the kickoff, but Ms. Carlisle promises that we will get it in. And we're, we've got a very motivated speaker that will be coming and it may be mid-year or whenever we get to do it, but she promises it's gonna be a great event and I trust that it will be. Um, so thank you all for what you do. We, we greatly appreciate it. So uh, at this time, I will accept a motion that we go into executive session to discuss or deliberate upon the appointment, employment, compensation, hiring, disciplinary action or dismissal or periodic evaluation or rating of a public officer or employee or to interview applicants for the position of superintendent and to discuss matters related to safety. Do I have a motion, Ms. Oliver? And second by Mr. Proctor. All those in favor? We will be excused for executive session.
All right, so at this time, I will accept the motion that we come out of executive session. Mr. Green. Second, Mr. Goodno. All in favor? None opposed. All right, so at this time, I will entertain a motion to approve the hiring recommendations uh, made by the superintendent. Mr. Proctor. Second, Dr. Sparks. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. And I will also entertain a motion to allow the Harris County superintendent to be given the authority to adjust safety protocols with board approval. Mr. Goodno, second. Ms. Oliver, all in favor? With there being no further business, we are adjourned. Hey, did you find out about our uh, GHS test? I did, and I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.